Uh, he pled guilty to killing a Warner Robins store clerk in 1984, but after spending decades in prison, the Georgia Supreme Court overturned his conviction. As Zach Merton tells us tonight, that might be the least surprising part of Timothy Johnson's story. Over the span of nearly 30 years, he was imprisoned, exonerated, retried, and acquitted, all for the same crime. And that's only the first half of his journey through Georgia's justice system. Now, Timothy Johnson is suing in federal court, but his case there and the questions it raises might be even more complex. There was a wrong and it needs to be righted. That's Timothy Johnson's attorney in 2015, moments after filing a federal lawsuit against a number of Houston County law enforcement officers. But to understand what led up to that, we've got to wind the clock back all the way to 1984. When Warner Robins police detectives thought of then 22-year-old Johnson shot store clerk Teresa Stanley to death at this convenience store. Johnson pled guilty and spent the next 21 years in prison. But when the Georgia Supreme Court took a look at his case in 2006, they ruled he had not been properly advised of his rights and overturned his conviction. Johnson got a second chance. But Houston County District Attorney Kelly Burke doubled down, reindicting Johnson on a new murder charge for that old 1984 crime. And this time, he sought the death penalty. But in the 2013 retrial, some evidence from the case's first go around couldn't be presented because it had been destroyed. Johnson's friends and the victim's family waited on edge for a verdict. The jury found Johnson innocent. After nearly 30 years, he was finally a free man, able to celebrate with the friends who stuck with him through it all. This thing has been going on for 29 years, and finally, God brought it to a closure. But what really happened here? Did Johnson escape on a technicality and get away with murder? After all, he did initially plead guilty. Or did something else happen decades ago that changed his life forever? And it drove me out to a bridge somewhere out in 96, I believe, and, and they dangled me. There was about four officers that was holding me and another officer that was, I believe, a detective. In that 2015 federal lawsuit naming more than a dozen House and County defendants, Johnson alleges after getting arrested in 1984, he was driven to a bridge where unknown law enforcement officers dangled him over the side, telling him to fess up or else. According to federal court documents, he never confessed, but later did plead guilty in exchange for the district attorney dropping the death penalty. I missed having a family, uh, marrying, having kids. Uh, I missed out on my college education. Uh, this, this, oh, there's so much that I missed out on. But that same federal judge noted that Johnson never said anything about the bridge incident before 2015 and dismissed that claim and most others in a suit for a number of legal technicalities, including an expired statute of limitations. The judge also dismissed most of the defendants, but four years after the suit was first filed, the case is still alive. One defendant remains, Johnson's former jailer, Margaret Hayes. And now it's up to a jury of their peers to find the truth. The issue before the court, whether that House and County deputy violated Johnson's constitutional rights by keeping him in administrative segregation for years while he was here at the House and County Jail. According to a federal court ruling, House and County Sheriff's Office Sergeant Margaret Hayes oversaw inmate classification for some of the years while Johnson was an inmate at the House and County Jail awaiting his 2013 retrial. Johnson alleges that Hayes decided to permanently assign him to administrative segregation, where federal appellate court judges said Johnson was confined to a cell where he could communicate with other inmates only through the vent. He could exit his cell only to shower and occasionally attend 30-minute yard calls. Though a district court judge notes Johnson was also on the workforce, served meals, and was allowed visitors. All in all, though, Johnson's attorney, Zara Karinchak, says putting him in those conditions violated his right to due process. And she thinks now that should be punished. And I have talked to dozens of folks in all areas of law, and they've all shared the same sentiment with me, which is shock and amazement. According to court documents, Hayes testified that Johnson asked to remain in administrative segregation because he wanted a room by himself. Johnson denies that. And now it's up to a jury to decide who's telling the truth. That civil trial scheduled for July 29th. Johnson's attorneys did not return our repeated calls and emails asking for a current comment on this story. 
Hayes' lawyer declined to comment when we reached him by phone. The Houston County Sheriff's Office also declined to comment on the case. If you want to learn more about this case or read the court documents for yourself, you can find them on our website, 13wmaz.com.